Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick video about today's announcement from Sony introducing the A6100 and A6600 to their mirrorless APS-C lineup of interchangeable lens cameras. Now you can see I've got the A6500 here and the A6300. I don't have the A6400, but I have reviewed it. A great camera. These are both very solid also, but clearly these have aged, as has the A6000. And don't ask me what Sony's doing with their actual naming of these cameras, because basically what we've got now is an A6000, which is where many would argue it all began in terms of Sony making a leap in the mirrorless world, which is a great value camera now, still strictly video, nothing, you know, nothing special. Then we've got the A6100 that was just introduced today. No A6200, so I don't really know what's going on. Then we've got the A6300. Then we have the A6400 that I've already covered and reviewed. The A6500, and last but not least, their top of the line, at least for now, A6600 that was introduced today. So I'm not sure where this naming structure is coming from. It's like worked its way backwards, sideways. It's all over the place. But let's focus on the cameras. These are two both very good cameras. They still are, but they've gotten older, no question about it. And Sony generally listens to consumers and responds. Now, a lot of people, I'm going to move these aside, were underwhelmed by the response that they got from Sony today with the announcement of these new models. Now, I don't have the cameras. Uh, I'm on Sony Alpha Rumors website. I do have specifications, and I'm going to go ahead and blow them up so that you can get a nice, clear picture of what we're talking about. Now, before I run through these specs, try to give you as wide a shot as we can. Before I run through them, the first thing I'm going to point out personally is that it's a good thing that Sony is still introducing uh, APS-C bodies, something a lot of people had felt other than the A6400 Sony had walked away from. They also introduced new glass today that is APS-C specific. I'll be talking about that in this video as well. That to me is another good sign. Uh, but I'm reading this a little bit differently than the majority of people out there. Uh, I'm not overwhelmed by the A6100 or A6600. Essentially, the A6100 is a replacement model for the A5100, so a very budget-oriented entry-level APS-C camera. And as you can see from the actual specs, 24.2 megapixel sensor. Uh, we do have up to 11 frames per second continuous autofocus. It's really eight if we're going to talk about without blackout. Uh, the autofocus system, that's where things have really changed. 425 points of phase detection. That's pretty damn good, especially for an entry level 750 US dollar body. Uh, then in addition to that, uh, we do have real time tracking. We have real time eye autofocus for humans and other animals, because you know humans aren't animals. And then Silent shooting, I mentioned it's the eight frames per second interval uh, shooting for time lapse, something that Sony has started to integrate since Play Memories has died. Uh, 4K 30p, a lot of people were looking for 60p. Keep on dreaming. And I'm not saying that as a knock to anyone who wants it, I want it too. But if it's not in the A7R Mark IV, their full frame beast that's coming out next month, it's not going to be in these little baby cameras, okay? It's just not happening. They're not giving you a backdoor to better performance for less money. No manufacturer does that. Do they make some nice compromise cameras? Sure. Real-time tracking for movies, 180-degree uh, tilt, you know, touch-operated monitor, so the display does flip all the way around. And you get a decent OLED viewfinder, a microphone jack, and we're still working with a W-series battery. Now, let's move... The stats in the center of the specs are for the A6400, which many will argue the A6600 is really just an A6400 with IBIS. That's in-body stabilization. Uh, and I understand why, because essentially it does have much of the same stuff going on under the hood. You have a 24 megapixel sensor. Uh, you know, the range is the same uh, in terms of ISO. And then the autofocus system is basically identical. Again, uh, 11 frames uh, per second, but again, eight if you want no blackout. Again, the real-time eye autofocus for humans and animals. Silent shooting, already mentioned. There's the big one, the in-body five-axis image stabilization. And that's where people are, will argue this is really the A6500, 
but now with the A6400's autofocus system. And also, of course, the lack of play memories, because that's the other thing uh, that the A6500 had that has gone away, that has been discontinued. 4K 30p, uh, you have HDR. Uh, no S-Log, by the way, on the uh, A6100. I don't think I mentioned that. And then as we scroll down, you know, again, the 180-degree tiltable touch-operated LCD display monitor. This was all introduced with the A6400. When I reviewed that, I said, I imagine we're going to see this expanded. That's exactly what we got. We got two models that are really similar to the A6400, one price below it, one priced above it, and kind of makes sense. And in terms of the EVF, again, the same exact spec as the A6400, but now we have a microphone and a headphone jack. Only a mic jack on that A6400, but I've saved the best for last. We have a Z battery, which is promising basically more than two times the overall battery performance of the W series inside of the brand new A6600. And body alone, I believe it's going to be $1,400. I'll include links in the description. So what are my impressions of these two cameras? Well, first and foremost, also just so you know, the A6600, slight redesign on the grip because it does have to accommodate that new battery, something we don't have with previous generations like the A6500 or even the latest gen A6400. Now to me, the biggest improvement is that battery. Now, do I think that's a huge improvement for the majority of users on a budget? Absolutely not, because W Series batteries, generic or genuine, are not expensive. So if that is the measure of the real improvement we got here from the A6400, or even the A6500, 6300, where the autofocus system, of course, was revamped, it's not a huge gain. It really isn't. So... Among these two cameras, of course, the A6600 is the more impressive camera because right now it is the most complete APS-C offering on the market. How does it fare against competitors? I would say fairly well. Some will argue that, you know, Canon and Fuji each have their own respective uh, advantages, and I understand why, but they also have drawbacks, and uh, I would make the argument that the A6600 at 1400, which is less than what the, I believe what the A6500 was launched at, I think it was 1500 body alone, might have been 1600. My memory's a little bit off right now. It's a pretty compelling offering. Now, for people that were looking for a higher megapixel count, I kind of laugh because, you know, is this about the megapixel wars? Again, I mean, that's what that brings to mind. Arguing they didn't make improvements on the sensor, I will agree with. The fact that we didn't get 32 megapixels or 30, would I like to see more? Yeah, why not? Do I need it? No. I care more about the balance of the, the body of the camera being filled out. One of the things they did was giving us finally a new battery, which isn't a new battery if you've been shooting full frame in their current generation, starting with the A9, of course the A7 III, A7R Mark III, but... If you're in any other camera they've ever made, you didn't have that sort of capability when it came to battery life. And that could be the difference for some users. Again, budget users, I don't see that being the difference. So that's why I do like this a lot, but 1400 versus uh, the pricing for the A6400, it's a really big jump just to get in-body image stabilization as well as the headphone microphone jack combo. And I'm not sure that that's gonna be enough to really sell this camera. The A6100, on the other hand, I think is a really solid value. I mean, yes, it doesn't have S-Log, it doesn't have HLG, so you don't have profiles and stuff, but who at entry level, I mean, I'm sure there are some, but the majority at entry level don't give a crap about that stuff. It's people who are spending a thousand and up that are thinking in those terms. Amateur, pros alike, hobbyists, whoever. Uh, so I do like the A6600, uh, the pricing, it's really close to where the A7 Mark III sits right now, but you're talking about full frame versus APS-C, and it's not that cut and dry. Some people don't want to get a larger body, and I understand that. A lot of people will say, why not just go straight to an A7R, I mean, an A7 Mark III. It is a significantly larger camera than the 503 grams that the A6600 is going to set you back. Furthermore, you already have a lot of native E-mount APS-C glass, and now you've got two more options 
which I'm going to give you another twist on, which is that a lot of people are saying, oh, they're too expensive. And that's because, let's see if I can find it here. I'm sure that Sony Alpha Rumors has uh, links to both the 16 to 55 as well as the, um, the zoom lens. I'm just looking to see where. I mean, there are your images right there. He's got his B&H links. Um, what do I think of this? Well, let's get past pricing. I mean, 1400 is a lot for a 16 to 55 mil f2.8, which in full frame is more like the 24 to 70 f4 uh, that you can buy for like $700. Uh, you know, the old Sony Zeiss, the first one that came out uh, full frame. The 70 to 350, on the other hand, I think is fairly reasonable at $1,000. It's not a fast lens, but that's not what it's designed to do. But here's my take on these two lenses, as opposed to everyone else who's talking about how expensive they are and, you know, they're not good additions. Sony only introduces new glass like this when they're getting ready for usually new bodies. Now, I know they were announced alongside two new bodies, but these two new bodies don't bring new sensors. This tells me we may very well see an A7000 or a 6700 or whatever cockamamie number Sony comes up with for their flagship, I, I gotta believe it's in the works. And I say that because when you look at every single time Sony has put out new lenses, it's to prepare for a new sensor. It's to get ready for that rollout. And they're hoping that there will be adoption before that ca those camera bodies make it to market. And those bodies will just cement the need for two new lenses. So I have a little bit of a different take on this. I see these two new lenses as Sony making a shift, at, you know, taking a turn towards pitching us on a much more expensive body, possibly close, closer to the $2,000 mark in the APS-C realm. And that's not unrealistic. I think it's very realistic that we're going to get some kind of flagship you know, APS-C camera that is better than the A6600 that is going to wow you and that is going to probably be around $1,700 or $1,800. Still be less than the A7 Mark III, still be appealing and have advantages over the A7 full-frame Mark III. And then these two lenses are going to become a whole lot more relevant. So it's a dip back into APS-C. I like that they've done it. Now, in terms of what they did, was it underwhelming? Well, Sony doesn't have to do a hell of a lot these days because they're at the top of the market. And when you're at the top and you've been the innovator for the last five plus years, because they really have, and I'm not making excuses. This is the way the market works, folks. I mean, all these people bitching about oh, where where is this feature? I was expecting this. Oh, I can hold on to my camera for a little bit longer. They didn't do anything revolutionary. I don't disagree with you. But also remember, this is a business and Sony is treating it exactly as one. And in doing so, because they pretty much own the mirrorless world and anyone who argues otherwise is on Kool-Aid, they dictate the market now. So while there may be some competing products, Sony owns that space. They got it on lockdown and they are going to be the ones kind of like what Apple and Samsung do in the smartphone realm to determine what the rest of the market does. So what Canon and Nikon used to enjoy once upon a time is a luxury now afforded by Sony. So that's my insight on the launch today. Um, the only reason this didn't get up sooner, didn't get done sooner, is I have not had internet for the last two days. Thank you, Xfinity. Love you so much. But hopefully everyone understands the points I'm making here. These are not bad offerings. They're solid. I think if you don't own cameras like the ones I started off the top of the video with, the A6300 uh, or 6500, these are your new entry points. You've got the A6100, which is good for, again, entry level. And then the 64 and 66 fill the rest of the gap till we get to full frame. And arguably for some, it's not just fill the gap, they are the selection instead of going to the A7 Mark III or the A7R Mark III, because they don't necessarily need full frame. They don't necessarily need everything that comes with that. And there are less expensive lenses. You don't have to make this leap because guess what? The megapixel count didn't go up. But the G branding, that tells me the megapixel's coming. Man, those megapixels are coming. I smell it. 
And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But based on my experience with Sony, watching them grow, not just reviewing, uh, but being a consumer and seeing the way they take the market and the direction that they usually follow. I mean, I can't understand the naming of these cameras, but I do understand, you know, that they are systematic and yes, they react to what we want, but they also make money. That's what they've done really well. I mean, go back to 2012, they were in the toilet. Now they're on the top of the mountain. And up there, you do whatever you want. I'm not saying it's a good thing. So none of these cameras, neither of the two announced today, were going to blow anybody away. But in the same vein, they do bring more options to APS-C, which you didn't have before. And I think that matters. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that do not want to go full frame. It's not in their budget. It's not, you know, something that they necessarily feel they need. They don't care about it. And APS-C is still the best quality you're going to get in its form factor. Again, there are competing, two competing products, two manufacturers. That's it. We'll see what Panasonic brings next. But for now, the A6600 is probably, not probably, but definitely, I think, will be the camera to own in the mirrorless APS-C space, meaning sub full frame. I'll include micro four thirds, obviously. I mean, it's got pretty much everything. All it doesn't have is, of course, a new sensor, which would have been nice, but Sony didn't need to do it. And part of the reason they probably didn't is because that new sensor is going to be in the flagship. The flagship that will likely have autofocus similar to the A9. The flagship that will likely have the, the dual SD card slots that you don't see here. The flagship that could even have the 4K 60 frame rate. It's possible. Likely, I don't know, because again, when you're at the top, you don't have to be bleeding edge anymore to win business, because you've got the business. So that pretty much rounds it out. I said this video would be quick. Surprise, surprise, it's not. And I'm glad that I held off on comparing the RX100 Mark 7 to the A63, 65, or 6400, because now we've got these cameras to compare them to. And I think that is going to be the more direct comparison considering latest and greatest and how close they are in pricing. The other flip side to this is the 6400. A lot of people think it's going to go on sale. I don't. I think the 6400 is going to hold price. The cameras that are going to go on sale are these. The 6300 and the 6500. These are the cameras that principally you're going to get bargains on going ahead because now, well, they're old tech. You've got new technology here in all three of these models that don't render these cameras obsolete, but do put them in the rear view mirror. There's my take on it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Wish I had samples. Sony's just now sending me the RX0 Mark II. So God knows when I'm going to see any of the other cameras, um, hopefully sooner rather than later. I want to be able to stay on point, keep in trend like I always have for, you know, since how many years is it already? I don't even know. I've lost track. At any rate, hope you all enjoyed this video. There's my take on the launch today. New glass, new bodies. Good to see Sony. Hasn't forgotten APS-C. And I see this as a hint towards us seeing more. That's all. Not less. And that's good considering the APS-C market for them has been relatively dry. Hope you enjoyed. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.